My name is Wyatt Starosta, um, and I work for OpenTable, a company based in San Francisco. Just to explain a little bit about what the company does, it is focused around food. Uh, we connect diners with restaurants and through online reservations. And we also help those restaurants deliver better service to those diners through, uh, it's called table management software. And I've been working there for about three years as a UX researcher. So that means in those three years, I've been getting paid to eat and to think and to dream about food. It's been a pretty awesome gig. Um, and not too long ago, I started to realize something. And that is that when you dine out at a restaurant, their, their product, the, the food, isn't the, the only thing that they're serving. The other thing that's almost equally as important is the hospitality. And so today we're gonna to be talking about hospitality. Um, the reason why hospitality or service is so important is because it's like the, the glue that holds that experience together. And it can really make or break a meal. So you've all probably experienced something like this where you've gone out uh, to a restaurant that was probably an okay restaurant, but the service was just so damn good that you walked away feeling like, wow, that was the best chicken I've had in my life. And it was all because of the service. And that's the power of great hospitality. And like great design, if you're doing hospitality right, you shouldn't notice it. And so I don't fault you for not noticing um, the sort of the hidden things that happen behind the scenes. And that's what we're gonna do today is expose the hidden choreography of restaurant hospitality. And in doing so, our hope is that it will uh, inspire you as you think about how service surrounds and enhances your products and designs. So, there's a couple things. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Um, we're gonna be employing a bit of theater at some point. But before we get into that, I wanna, I wanna tell you how I, I came to appreciate great hospitality. It was from humble beginnings. I was born in Akron, Ohio. So Ohio and all the Midwestern states, they call them the flyover states because nobody's going there to hang out. It's, it's really it's the, kind of the, the demographic center of the United States. So it's not um, like hip like the East Coast and it's not cool like the West Coast. It is just middle America. And the restaurants in Akron, Ohio, and a lot of these Midwestern states represent that very middle American experience. The food is sort of okay, um, and, the, and the service is friendly, but not very memorable. So here's a picture of what some of these restaurant chains, the casual chains that you might find um, in a lot of these American cities. And the way they, they line up is you, when you're driving to a mall, they typically, there's a ton of them around shopping malls. And so you'll see some of these. Are these familiar brands to you? I was looking around Warsaw. I see a couple nods here, but the one I saw was TGI Fridays. TGI Fridays is a perfect example of a casual chain. And so growing up in Akron in the 80s, um, my parents, when they took my sister and, out to, sister and I to go out to eat, they weren't trying to impress us. You're not going to impress anybody by going to one of these places. The reason why they went there is my dad could feed a family of four for around $30, which I calculated to be about 100 and 120 zloty. So inexpensively, they, he can feed a family of four. Um, the other reason why they're going there is there's a few things about the food that I'm gonna point out. The first is that the, the food is not gonna be winning any awards for anything. The food is pretty straightforward. You get what you expect from there. Um, here's, a, here's a menu from one of these places. This place is called the Cheesecake Factory and it's wildly popular. And so the other thing I'm gonna point out is how unspecialized the food is. All right, so with a name like Cheesecake Factory, you would think they would specialize in cheesecake. And you can get 37 different kinds of cheesecake here. But they also serve lunch and dinner. So that means you can get steak and salad, pork, and chicken. And this is two pages of different types of chicken you can get. 
So there's a couple different Chinese options. There's a couple different Japanese options. You can get, uh, I think there's probably French and British options in there as well. So all this is to say that these restaurants are trying to appeal to a very broad audience. Their goal is to get people in the door, as many people in the door as possible, and for them to leave happy and satisfied and not surprised. And that's another reason why this type of food that they're serving is sort of like the greatest hits of food. It's not, it's not going to be anything niche or unique. Um, so we're going to employ a bit of theater to, to show what service is going to be like at one of these restaurants. So I'm going to be joined by a couple of my colleagues on stage here. Uh, yay, thank you. Um, Sarah will be performing the role of our server. Stephanie is working double time here. She's going to be our hostess and general manager. I will be playing the role of myself. Uh, Kendra will be playing the role of my wife. And I'll also be narrating along the way. Um, there's a couple things I want to point out. So to understand how service is performed in restaurants, it's very important to understand the information that they're collecting about me as the diner. And so to make that a little bit easier for you to see, we're, we've, we're making use of these balloons. So whenever you see a, piece, a balloon flying around, this represents a piece of information about me. So keep your eye out for the balloons. Okay, so in our act one, we are going to talk about what happens in a typical American city at, on Wednesday. It's around three o'clock, we eat dinner uh, earlier than you guys. So around three o'clock, I'm getting hungry. And I'm gonna send uh, Kendra a text message. And this is, I don't know if you guys have this sort of text message exchange with your significant others, but it's pretty laborious, right? Hey, what do you want to eat for dinner? I don't care. What about pizza? Eh, not into it. How about sushi? And so we kind of go through this game until we finally decide it's not any of these. And so I go to my old backup plan. We're going to go to Snapplebee's. What do you think about that, honey? And she says, sure, right? Because she knows she can get that salad that she loves, and I can get that steak thing that I love. So. Um, right about that time that this text message is happening, something interesting is happening over at Snapplebee's. It's called the pre-shift lineup, and this is where the staff meet before the evening to prepare. All right, Sarah. Well, it is Wednesday, so as you know, to get pe more people in the door, we have half-price appetizers yep. until 8 p.m. And in other news, headquarters has recently released a new loyalty program. So okay. try to get as many people as you can to sign up because the restaurant that gets the most signups gets a big fat bonus at the end of the quarter. Excellent. Yeah? Yes. All right, so you got this section. Yep. All right, let's go. All right. Okay, well, it's around seven o'clock. Kendra and I are arriving, and man, we are hungry. Let's see here. Okay. Um, whoa, babe, I'm starving. Me too. Okay. I'm so starving. Hi, welcome to Snapplebee's. Party of two? Uh, yes, party of two. Okay, hold on, let me check my computer here. Oh, let me check, so Stephanie is looking at this thing, right, this is the computer she's looking at. Pretty crazy, this is actually one of our old products, sorry to admit it, and it's got a ton of information on her. Uh, so what she's looking at, I'll boil it down, she's looking at a few things. It's like, when's the table gonna be coming available, and then uh, which, which tables are already busy? She wants to be able to quote us a wait time to let us know how long it's gonna take. So this restaurant is so big that uh, she's relying on technology to help her get things done. All right, could you please hold on a second? Oh, man. Hello, yes, this is Napo Bees on Market Street. How may I help you? Party of four? Hold on, let me check. Yes, that, that might be a while. I'm sorry, I can't guarantee a table. Mm-hmm, hope to see you soon. Party of two? Yeah. Right this way. Okay, come on, Here. let's do it. Okay, so we finally are, uh, get seated. It actually wasn't that big of a problem. Ow. Ah, but you'll notice that Stephanie was looking at that technology more than she was paying attention to me. All right. Hello, and welcome to Snapplebee's. Oh, 
My name is Sarah. I'll be taking care of you tonight. I want to let you know that we do have half price appetizers until 8 p.m. tonight. Awesome. Um, can I start you off with one of our signature cocktails? Uh, yeah, you know, I would love something kind of fruity and cold. Okay, if you love fruity, you will probably love our mango margarita. Sounds awesome. Excellent. And for you? Um, I'll take the summer squeeze. All right, sounds great. Now, are you guys part of our membership program? No. No. Oh, okay. So it's our great new loyalty program. Um, if you sign up today, every fifth visit to Snapplebee's, you get free nachos. Awesome. And on your birthday, you get a free entree. Oh, my God. Awesome. It's, awesome. Okay. it's really easy to sign up right here on your table. And I'll oh. be right back with your drinks. Okay. A little kiosk. That's nice. What do you say, honey? Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Free nachos. <laughs> All right. So what's the first thing they want here? Uh, name. That's pretty standard. Birthday. Oh, that's how they're going to send me yeah. that free yeah. stuff. No problem here. Wait a minute. Email address. This is a I mean, everyone asks for your email today. Don't but my phone it. number? Look, it's a required field. I mean, it's yeah. pretty free nachos. Yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now they want our home mailing address. What are they going to send us? I'm sure it's just to capture the information. I mean, okay. free nachos. Free nachos. Free. We're doing this. Okay. So... Here's our first piece of information. That was a ton of information when you think about it that went from this iPad. And so where do you think this information is going? It's not staying in the restaurant. It's gone to oh, <laughs> Houston, Texas, which is a Snapplebee's worldwide headquarters. And uh, later on in the presentation, we're going to find out what happens to that information. All right, are you all ready to order? Yes, starving. All I, right, what I'm can gonna, I get for you? I'm going to have that um, the steak fajita. Sounds great. And for you? Yeah, I'd like the Caesar salad. All right. Um, by the way, um, I have a dairy allergy. OK. Um, well, we can Does have Does have any dairy in it? Yeah, um, we'll ha substitute the dressing for you. How about that? Um, yeah, and also, I have some problems with gluten. Uh, OK, no problem. Um, we'll have just have them hold the croutons then. OK. okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Having any appetizers tonight? Um, no. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll be put this right in. Oh, all right. So if you guys just noticed what was happening, Kendra seems pretty bummed out. She was trying to let Sarah know about some food allergies. Now, while Sarah noted those things, what she did was translate Kendra's food allergies into something that's going to make sense to the kitchen. So the kitchen's focused on just cranking out food. And so they don't want to be thinking about, oh, she's dairy-free. What should I do about that? They just want to know what to do. So she's telling them, substitute the uh, dressing with something else and to put the croutons on the side. The other thing is, she's not interested in connecting this information to Kendra. So once we leave, that information is going to go with Kendra. All right, missed out on an opportunity there. All right. Now we're going to see the meal progress here. Yes, oh. who had the salad? Oh, I, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I had the so steak had thing. Okay. All right. I don't know if it's, I've been working at a food company for so long, but does this happen to everybody where you, you order something and then somebody comes in and says, who ordered this thing? <laughs> this happened at a, uh, it, it's no fault to these restaurants. Here's the reason why they do it. They're all about this efficient operation. It makes a lot of sense for Sarah to be the order taker and to just go around and take orders. And then we have Stephanie, she's the order deliverer, and she, her job is to deliver orders. So this role specialization helps them be more efficient. So great for efficiency, but it doesn't make the interaction seem so personal. Okay. Um, oh, the rest of the meal will progress in a similar fashion. Can I tempt you all with dessert tonight? Oh, I'm stuffed. Oh, all right. So stuffed. Well, I have your check right here, and I'll just take these out of your way for you. Oh, okay. This yeah. is our not-so-subtle cue for us to leave. So because restaurants like this rely on a uh, sort of a, a large volume of transactions to stay in business, that means that this table here is going to turn over probably six times in one night. That means every hour to hour and a half, a new party is seated down here. So Sarah's doing her job at clearing us out of there. See you later, Kendra. I got a presentation to finish up. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at, oh, I know I missed some slides here. 
Oh, no, I'm good. So let's take a look at the information that was, was transacting back and forth. So the first set of information was the stuff that I voluntarily gave up. Uh, but there was another piece of information that we didn't see happening. And this is, there, you're, there's a computer system here, and they're logging things like what I ordered, how much I spent, that crazy piece of software that you saw at the beginning. That's also going to tell them how long I sat down at this table. So all of this information is being gathered. Some of it I know about, and some of it I don't know about. And I'm going to tell you, I think I'm OK with this at this point, because most of it I gave permission to take. Um, and the other thing is that none of this information that uh, I'm, I'm sharing, they don't care about me as a person. What they're more interested in is the larger demographics that I might represent. Um, do they actually care about my birthday? No. What they want to know is that I'm a 44-year-old male and that I love steak, and that's it. Um, now, here's the information that we tried to give them, uh, but they didn't take it. And so while it would be nice if these types of restaurants uh, took down all this information and provided a personal experience, I don't really expect that to happen when I go to a restaurant like that. And I think that's part of the beauty of going to these places. They set your expectations right here. I mean, it's like right here. And they meet it every single time consistently. And that's why I love going to these types of restaurants. Now, are you guys ready to see what happens when you go to a restaurant that sets your expectations up here? Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. This is the, the part you've all been waiting for. So we're going to get set up here. Okay, first thing you'll notice, there's going to be a lot more information flowing back and forth. So keep an eye out for that. The second thing you'll notice, oh, thank you, hold on, um, is that this information is going to collect and pull together in, in these areas that we call information hubs. And these information hubs allow the staff at Wexford's to act as a single organism so they can deliver their ultimate goal, which is to just deliver awesome service. So um, let's talk about great restaurants. There's a certain class of restaurants that have elevated service to an art form. And these are known as the Michelin starred restaurants. And depending on the sort of the level and consistency of that food and service, a restaurant can receive one, two, or three Michelin stars. So three Michelin stars represents the very best of the best, and there are only about 120 of those in the entire world. Um, has anybody here dined out at a Michelin star, three Michelin star restaurant? I've got one, two, two. Oh, Lee. Nice. Three people have. <laughs> so these people can tell you how remarkable the, the service truly is. It's something very unique. Now, for the rest of us here, don't worry. We're going to be showing you exactly what it's going to be like. And we're going to be pointing out some of those hidden interactions that happen behind the scenes. So it's a, it's a bonus here. Um, OK, so we're getting ready to start. So about um, a month or two ago, I made I knew I was coming to Poland, so I wanted to treat Kendra to a special night out. Um, so I made a, a reservation at uh, the fictitious Wexford's restaurant here in Warsaw, um, the only three Michelin star restaurant in Warsaw. Now, it's about a week before I arrive, and Stephanie, who's playing the role of our host, is, is already busy at work preparing for my arrival. Stephanie, can you tell us what you're doing? Yes, so right now I am looking at our reservations book mm -hmm. and I'm trying to see who's coming in. Because of the reputation of our restaurant, sometimes we get head of states who come in, we have celebrities, and other people who just want to scarf down the food, post photos on Facebook and Instagram, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm looking at who's familiar and who's not, and I see somebody called Wyatt Starosta, and I have no idea who he is, so I'm going to Google him. And I find his LinkedIn profile, and I see that he works at Open Table, and that he's a UX researcher. OK, let me see what else I can find on the internet. Nothing on Facebook, Twitter. Oh, 
he has a wine blog, and he really uh, likes wine. Looks like he just went to Italy. Good to know. Wow, you're collecting a lot of information about me. I'm feeling a little creeped out at this point. Um, what's up with that? Well, this is actually all pu public information that's available, so we're not you know, going to dig in some weird sources. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of high-end restaurants actually do this so that they can provide you with better and more personal service. Okay, so still feeling a little weird about it, but we'll see how this plays out. All right, so we're gonna fast forward. It's the day before I arrive, and we're gonna check in on Stephanie again and see what's going on. Stephanie, what are you doing today? Yep, so today, this is the day I, that I remind everybody of their reservations, so I'm gonna call. Oh wait, could you just hold on a second? Yeah, no problem. Wait a minute, I've got a phone call coming in. Hello, this is Wyatt. Hi, Mr. Starosta. This yes. is Stephanie calling from Wexford to uh -huh. confirm your reservation at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Yes, we are looking forward to it. Yeah, I would like to inform you that it's a seven-course meal, uh, seven meal and it takes about three hours to complete. Uh, seven course, three hours, wow. Um, you know, Kendra and I have a, a, a show at the Warsaw Opera to catch at 9.30. Is that gonna be a problem? No problem, I'll let our staff know about that. Okay. Um, any allergies or dietary oh, yeah. restrictions we should know about? Kendra is very allergic to uh, dairy and she's avoiding gluten. Okay, we'll make a note of that. I'll tell the chef. Mm -hmm. Any occasion that you're celebrating with us? Uh, yeah, we are wrapping up a wonderful uh, UX conference here in Warsaw and it's our one year anniversary. Oh, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> we do as well. Bye. Bye. Okay, so you'll see that not only was um, Stephanie collecting lots of information about me, she was also relaying some information that's gonna set my expectation for the evening. Now let's see what she's gonna do with all that information. Now you remember uh, uh, the pre-shift lineup at Snapplebee's, this is going to be the Wexford's version of the pre-shift lineup. All right, Sarah. So yes. one of your tables tonight is Mr. Starosta and his wife, and All they right. are celebrating their anniversary. Okay. Mr. Starosta is from the United States, and he is a UX researcher at OpenTable. A what? UX researcher. Do you know what that is? No. Um, okay. I think okay. it's <laughs> design-related. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, if it's design related and he's interested in design and he's coming in for his anniversary, he might like a special printed menu to take home to remember the night by. That sounds great. Um, and maybe we should put them in a more quiet area of the restaurant mm -hmm. and maybe have some flowers on their table for their anniversary. Good idea. Any notes about wine preferences? Yes, I saw that he just went to Italy. So maybe okay. something a little more aromatic, but check with our sommelier, Pascal. Okay. Um, anything else I should know about their uh, plans yes. for the evening? They need to go to the opera at 9.30. Okay. So let's get them out of here by 9.10. Okay. Um, I will chat with the chef and have him pre-fire courses one and two. That should save us a little bit of time. Yeah. And then I'll check with Wyatt after to see if they need a taxi to go to the show. Sounds great. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. So that was our very first information hub. Um, and we're going to see what Sarah does with it here in a second. So what they've done is, you remember Snapplebee's put together their sort of version of that? It was all tactical. It's like, hey, this is what needs to happen tonight. Here, they were coming together to put together a sort of a, make sure we we're having a special night. All right, so all these things were documented, and Sarah's going to put them in the back, kind of the server section, where all the servers uh, congregate at different points in the evening. Um, this will be our, our second information hub, and we'll get to see what happens there in a minute. Okay, so Kendra, we're, we're arriving at Wexford's. It's, you take this, okay. It's seven o'clock, we're just on, in time. Hello, welcome to Wexford's. Oh. May I have your name? Uh, yeah, hold on a second. So one thing I wanna point out real quick, Stephanie's body position. She's standing right in front of us and totally focused in on us and not uh, paying any attention to her, her monitor at all. It's very important for them to make sure that technology doesn't get in the way of their interactions with their guests. Okay, so yeah, um, Wyatt Starosta, we have a reservation at seven o'clock. Oh yes, Mr. and Mrs. Starosta, welcome. Oh. 
Here's your table. Oh, I hope so you're awesome. enjoying your stay in Warsaw. Yeah, the people have been so lovely and kind. Everybody. Oh, great. Well, your waitress. Especially, especially the volunteers who've been kicking ass at the conference. Thank you. Okay. Well, your waitress, Sarah, will be right with you. Okay. Oh, let me take this. Oh, Stephanie just noticed something about Kendra. Let's see what, the, what she noticed. Okay, so Mr. and Mrs. Starosta are here, and okay. they are in a good mood. They're ready to party. And I recognize his wife. I think she's oh, really? famous. Let's check her Let's out. Let's look her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, 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 no, I mean like on, uh, on our system here. Let's check all her right. out. Oh, yes, it's Kendra Schimmel. Um, right. she's, she's a regular. She comes in here once mm -hmm. a month. Okay. Let's see. Yes, her allergies match what Mr. Right. Starosta told Got me. That. She doesn't like scallops. Gin and tonic. She loves gin and tonic. Let's start out with one of those. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to just recap what, what happened here. Um, Stephanie noticed something about us when we walked in. We had just wrapped up our conference. We are so excited. And so Stephanie's going to relay that information to Sarah. And it's important for Sarah to know the demeanor of our party because that's going to allow her to adjust her script to match our mood. And that's going to allow her to start to build rapport with us. Uh, the second thing that she noticed is Kendra, who's famous, has dined here before. <laughs> Whereas I'm a first time diner and Sarah will be building a new connection with me. More importantly, she's going to be solidifying that connection with Kendra. So let's see how that happens. Hello and welcome to Wexford. My name is Sarah and I'll be taking care of you tonight. May I bring water for the table? Uh, yeah, let's do some sparkling water. Okay, sparkling. Mm -hmm. um, do you prefer ice or no ice? Uh, no ice. Okay. So what uh, Sarah is doing here, if you can all see, Sarah is make, doing some hand gestures. Right? This allows her to silently and efficiently communicate with Stephanie, who's also playing our back waiter, um, and let her know um, what our, our water order is without having to break stride. So I want to tell you a cool little story here. Okay, this is information flow. Oh God, I'm behind on my slides. Here we go. So a couple years ago, I had an opportunity to go to Japan and visit relatives I hadn't seen in a while. This is a picture of us dining at, it's a somewhat formal lunch spot. And I think this was my second day here. Um, I remember I was very dehydrated and really engaged in the conversation with my cousins. So we're just talking and I just remember I was drinking a lot of water and putting it down. And then when I'd pick it up again, the water was always full, no matter how many times I picked it up. It was like magic. And so after I was sufficiently hydrated, I sat back from the conversation and I watched to see how this magic trick happened. And I'll tell you how it happened. You see this, this woman here in the center? This is our, our server. And it looks like she's serving us tea. She, she is serving us tea. But what she had done coming into the room, as, as soon as she's entered the room, She's observed on the table, and sort of like just scanned, what was happening. So she noticed that my cousin's, um, one of his small plates was finished. Uh, there was a, a little bit of, somebody spilled some soy sauce on the table. And so when she came in to serve the tea, she sort of strategically placed herself down. She kneeled down so gracefully and um, served the tea. And as she was doing that, she cleared the, in one, in one elegant move, just cleared, cleared the dirty um, dish, wiped up the soy sauce that was spilled, and refilled my glass. And this was happening constantly. This sort of this graceful, effortless move and just water coming in every single time. It was beautiful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is smooth service. So we're going to see how smooth service happens back at Wexford's. I have for you our uh, seven course tasting menu, oh, as lovely. well as one prepared without gluten or dairy. Thank okay. you. May I bring you a cocktail to start the evening? Sir, maybe you'd like a glass of Prosecco? Oh, wow, that would be perfect. All right, and ma'am, maybe you'd like a gin and tonic? Awesome. Excellent. Oh. So there's a couple things you should notice about Sarah, the way she engaged with us. She was making use of um, body movement and to kind of direct and redirect the conversation. So she was focused in on me, since I was the one who made the reservation, but it was really important for her to connect with Kendra. So she was subtly 
dipping in to, to confirm some information with Kendra. She didn't want to make Kendra stand out and feel like the freak of the dinner show because she has these allergies. It was just sort of nodding and just acknowledging, oh, is this okay? All right. So let's see. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to yes. have the uh, Piedmont Cabernet. Excellent choice. All right. Okay, so now we get to see how that hospitality plan is being used. As our meal progresses, I think I've got a good picture of it here. Here we go. Um, as the meal progresses, it's constantly being updated with things like our food and, and service and uh, preferences. And this is an information hub that's going to allow uh, others to pick up where Sarah may have to leave off. So if she's attending another table and Stephanie sees that my water glass is low, Stephanie can come in, check, and see that we, we love sparkling water with no ice and refill it without having to ask us. So smooth service. Um, okay, so we're going to pretend that the, the meal is progressing and we're about halfway through. And I'm going to see what Sarah's up to. What's going yeah. on? It may not look like I'm doing much, but I'm actually reading the air. This means I'm looking around the room for subtle signals to help me improve my service. Let me give you an example here. That table over there with the businessmen, they look deep in conversation. When their wine gets low, I may discreetly drop in, refill their wine, and quickly move on. However, that table over there looks like a date that's not going so well. So I may go over, have a little conversation just to lighten the mood. Now I'm noticing that Mr. Starosta is kind of picking around on his sixth course, and that's information I want to remember for later. So I'll take that. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. I think we're going to we're going to fast forward to the end. We are. We are. Man, this food was so great. We're going to fast forward to the end. I hope you enjoyed your meal. We wanted to say thank you for coming into the restaurant tonight with these uh, custom printed and designed menus for you to remember the evening by. Oh, these are beautifully designed. How did you know that we would care? I'm glad you enjoy them. Okay. May we call a taxi for you to go to your show? Yes, we are in a, a big hurry tonight. Excellent. Okay. So, shall we go, honey? Uh, why don't you go on without me? I just need to take care of a few things. I'll see you at the opera. Okay, now af after we leave, um, Stephanie and Sarah are still hard at work. Hey, can you make a note on Mr. Starosta's um, profile? Okay, so they had the Piedmont Cambridge in 05, and they really loved that. However, he was not enjoying uh, the uh, six course, the prawns, okay. so I wanna make sure we remember that for next time. All right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so um, Sarah has asked uh, Stephanie to document my entire meal experience there. So it's not only the things like my food and, and wine preferences, they're gathering other things as well. And one of the most important pieces of information that a restaurant can gather is uh, your relationship information. And this is something like when you go to uh, your favorite hairdresser or barber and they somehow miraculously remember, they'll say things, so, so how's Kendra doing? Right? And it's just that type of information about those relationships that really solidifies that connection. So that's one of the most important things that they'll gather. And so I've got another story about Japan, and I feel like they're the, the masters of this service game. This is at a casual restaurant, um, and this gentleman is collecting these business cards. And this is the very first step. This is, usually happens probably the second time that somebody comes in, he'll ask for their business card as a way to remember them by. So as he's collecting them, by the time you come in, maybe a third or fourth time, this is what's happening. He's building out a sort of a dossier on this individual. Now, I can't really read Japanese so well, but I can tell you this. All of this information is very personal information that he's gathering um, by doing things like reading the air and having small conversations with him. And that one personal pieces of information about that relationship, you can tell right down over here, you see where that stuff's whited out? This is when this guy broke up with this woman. And he had to white, out, white, white her name out because how embarrassing would that be when he walks in with, a, with, with another woman and he refers to her by the old woman's name. So let's look at the, the information exchange that happened. So we're gonna compare it with Snapplebee's. So at Wexford's, man, what an awesome dinner. 
But look at all this information. So I gave up a lot of information. It took a little bit of work for me to do. But I think it was worth it. But here's, look at the interesting part here is look at all the information they took without me knowing about it. That's a lot. And it's very personal information. And that's where it gets a little bit hazy here. And I don't know quite how I feel about it. That information that they know um, from Facebook, right? That's like my personal interests. They know my work history um, and my interests. And I think, you know, I'm feeling better that they're just trying to do it in service of this great experience, but a little bit shady, I think, there's going behind my back. And the final thing here is that, that the information that was given and not taken, nothing. They leave nothing behind. So there's, oh, here we go. Um, today we've, we've shown you how some of the best restaurants in the world are providing world-class service, how they're gathering information, dispersing it at key points so that that uh, restaurant staff can act as one single unit. So I want to invite you guys all to try it yourself. Now, the, the nearest three Michelin star restaurant is probably in Berlin. But if you, if you should find yourself near a three Michelin star restaurant, make a reservation online or over the phone and tell them something a little bit about yourself. And then when you arrive, keep your eyes open and look out for these balloons that will be floating around. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Okay, the first question. question. Uh, there is a very big difference between Michelin restaurant, even if it's only aspiring, and the casual food. And uh, right now in Poland, we have very well-known brands for casual food. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know your opinion at what point in the business growth uh, there is significant to uh, use the system like you are showing. I mean, I, I understand you have showed us some, and uh, not really digital, mm -hmm. like, you know, taking notebook and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, it's a topic that interests me, so I would like to know. Yeah. yeah. So there's, um, I think, an interesting phenomenon that happened probably around the 1980s. Prior to that, uh, casual restaurants occupied a very solid niche in the market. You had casual restaurants here. To the left of them would be sort of the fast food markets, like your McDonald's. And then to the right of that was your fine dining markets. And they all sort of operated in their own separate realms. But then the interesting thing that happened was that the fast food uh, restaurants started to have a little bit better food, right? And then the, the fine dining restaurants started to have a little bit more of a, a casual atmosphere. This is all due to the economy sort of collapsing these things down. And so the, the casual market in the middle was really getting squeezed. And so they started looking for ways to push back. And one of the ways that they started doing this is with technology. Now the technology is gonna allow them to operate a little bit faster and more efficiently like those uh, quick serve fast food restaurants. And that technology is gonna allow them to remember some of their guests a little bit better and provide better hospitality, just like your fine dining restaurants. And so that's what we see happening now. And so when I think about a restaurant and their evolution, this is the current state. But if you're starting out um, new with a restaurant, you may not need any of these tools at all. You may just need to figure out how to keep your restaurant running. At a certain point, though, you're going to want to remember who's coming back in and just having that nice hospitality experience. Okay. Thank you, Wyatt. Mm -hmm. One, two. Okay. Yeah. Who was the first one? Here, there, here. Okay, maybe we'll try here first. One second. One. Yeah, it works. Uh, my question is, where is the limit? Because I feel like it was amazing, and we have to thank you for showing us mm -hmm. this. But it would be creepy, you know, like I have never experienced it, never, ever. <laughs> and I would feel really weird when mm. someone remembered my preferences or anything. So my mm. question, where is the limit? 
Oh, well, um, I, I think there maybe is no limit. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. So um, our, our boss, he loves, that's his, his hobby, is dining out at Michelin star restaurants. Uh, and here's the story that first got me excited about this Michelin star experience. Uh, he flew to Chicago to visit his sister, but of course, go to Alinea, one of the many three star, Michelin star restaurants there. When he arrived, uh, he was greeted. They said, Mr. Stovacek, uh, good to see you. How was your flight? <laughs> they knew that he was flying from San Francisco to there. Now, it may have been that he, he, he mentioned it earlier on, on a phone call or something like that, or who knows, he doesn't know, and he didn't care. He really enjoyed that they reached out to him and acknowledged this, like, how was your flight? They were trying to make a personal connection with him, and so I agree, that's one kind of user type that loves this sort of thing, and I think uh, too much is, is never enough. And the, the interesting thing is that there's some, some types of diners that they almost expect you to do that, right? These are sort of the celebrities, I think some uh, diplomats or politicians expect you, I think you were telling me the story, how some uh, politicians expect you to know something about them, but, the, but sort of treat them like a normal person in some, some fashion kind of thing. So it's like Stephanie, who's playing the hostess, it's a very difficult job at these expensive restaurants. And that's why they're Googling and finding out this information just to get a sense of who's coming in. Now, it's just me from Open Table coming in. But if I was a famous celebrity like Kendra coming in, <laughs> they're going to want to treat her a little bit differently. And they're not trying to show all the information that they know about you. They're trying to strike a balance of how much they know and how much they're going to show. Because if they show too much, that's kind of garish and, and not very classy. And it could make you feel uncomfortable for that same reason. So you, may, you should never know that it's happening if they're doing it right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. There was one more person there. Uh, let me help you, please, with the mic. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about Open Table because you obviously uh, work there and come from from that place. Um, how does Open Table position itself in in uh, in the relation of what you are talking about? Um, does the application want to imitate somehow or um, uh, imitate this experience of uh, of um, three star restaurant and help? Uh, restaurants like Snapplebee's to uh, have more information about uh, about their customers, or maybe it's the other way around, or maybe there's no mm -hmm. no relation between both experiences. And then I have a second question: Do you think that um, you can digitize or somehow improve this personal approach with technology? Yeah. So this is sort of like a weird situation. I'm trying to speak on behalf of the company, like I'm the CEO. So I'll do it. Um, <laughs> yes. What OpenTable does is it provides a technology, right? And this technology is going to allow the restaurant to do certain things, but it's never, the restaurant doesn't see us as uh, the one providing the hospitality. The restaurant is providing the product and they're providing the hospitality. We're providing a tool that's going to help them uh, maybe provide a little bit better hospitality. And that's how we're being positioned. We're not being positioned as a, uh, the rock star that's going to come in and now you're going to do great service because of us. You're going to do great service if you care about great service. And you could be writing notes on a, a, a pen and paper and do great service. We're essentially kind of like that uh, pen and paper piece of book, but it's archivable and referenceable and searchable and you can put pictures in it. So there's some differences there, but we're never gonna try to replace and, and say that we're gonna uh, make, do restaurant hospitality better than you could ever do something yourself. All right, that's the CEO's perspective. Great, thank you. Is this the answer to your question? Yes, thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good work.